what's good this is marcus aka the fingers with the samplist and today we are checking out pacific ensemble strings by performance samples it is the next edition in the pacific suite of orchestral instruments from performance samples in this specific ensemble strings what you are getting is 16 violins 12 violas 10 cellos eight basses bonus content which includes three violins at the fortissimo three f's overlay the full strings patches solo harp noise floor waves you get access to close and a b mics you get articulations including sustains sordino sustains whisper sustains trills tremolos spiccatos pizzicatos marcados all the cados solo harp and you're getting over 30 gigabytes of content all bundled in this package for a great price it does require the full version of contact to use the full capacity of ensemble strings before we dive in on the presets one disclaimer is the instrument was provided by performance samples at no charge but that will not impact the judgment or review we are not influenced by the developer at all in fact the developer has not seen this video at all so we're going to go in and they're going to be like what are you talking about all right so let's jump in to the daw itself for pacific ensemble strings we're going to start with the violins we're going to start with legato those legato articulations the legato sustains before we get into that let's talk a little bit about the actual ui here so up top you have your typical contact instrument ui with your tune and and master settings and outputs and things up there you also have in the actual ui for the performance samples ui you have your close mics you have ambient mics you have volume for both you have panning for both you can also adjust whether it's stereo or surround there. So pretty much flexible flexibility there. You have transpose options. So if I hit a note here and I do transpose, uh, it will transpose the actual layout of the key. So if I do minus one, it will play in higher octave. So it is, it's a little bit opposite of what you might think transpose would do. It is moving the key layout down. So it's moving your note up an octave. A little confusing, but minus one. If I play that same note, I'm playing a C3. So as you can see, when I go minus two, it plays a higher octave so just keep that in mind you also can change your dynamic cc i have my midi controller here so i can adjust um you know, that's the pitch bend as you can see if i play low dynamic So I can get really dynamic there with the control. And you can switch between legato and sustain mode. If you notice, uh, there's also a key switch down here. You can adjust where the key switch lies on your keyboard. It's C minus one right now. Uh, you can also change, uh, lock that if you want. Then you have sample offset here, which you can use to help align the samples if you have multiple libraries that you're using at once. And then you can also adjust the release and you can turn that on or off. So let's play the violin, uh, 16 violins legato sustains. just to give you an idea of what the close mic sounds like i won't do this for all of them just for this example this is just the close mic so hopefully you can hear how that sounds and then this is just uh this a b mic here so you have really a great blend and then you can blend to taste with the different volume and pan settings so this is both of those mics Next, we have Sordino sustains, and this is what that sounds like. Uh, really great, really dynamic. Now we have Whisper sustains here. And if you notice, you don't have the legato options um, like you have for the legato sustains uh, on some of these articulations. So just keep that in mind. Uh, next, we have our marcados. And then we have our spiccatos. And 
And if you notice here, you have some other options here. You have your playback offset. offset. You also have your live offset. Uh, what you can do is you can record your input using the live offset, uh, using the live option down here. Uh, switch to live. You can record using live, and then you can also play back during playback. So that the live actually has a little bit less of a delay when you hit the note um, from what I understand. So you have that option there. Next, we have some pizzicato. And let me move this down an octave. Yeah, I really like that. Then we have tremolos. the sound of that uh, trills so for trills uh, what I found out um, uh, in my recording and in my travels is that you have to hold down two adjacent notes so either a minor second or a major second to get the trill to activate so this is C and C sharp and this is C and D but if I try C and E flat nothing or anything higher so uh, for trills you can only do a second note so just keep that in mind Great sounding there. Then we have some effects. We have two layers of effects here. And then the last effects. The first one uh, is effects shorts, and then this one is effects risers. Really great sounding effects there. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, so yeah, shout out to the violins. Next, we have the violas coming into play. So we're going to bring those articulations up. Uh, very similar, I believe the exact same as the violins. So here are our legatos. Let me bring this up into view here. have our Sordino sustains. One thing I really like is the air that's in the, um, you hear a lot of the, the room tone in these uh, recordings. We have whisper sustains. Then the viola marcados. Then our spiccados. And pizzicados. trills and just remember those seconds and then we have our effects going on so we have our shorts we 
really, really great for those horror type things. And then we have our risers. That's a long riser there. Um, so yeah, that will get us through our violas. Next we have our cellos. So let's bring up the cello library here. So our cellos, we have 10 cellos. We're gonna start with the legato sustains again here. Then we have our sordino. Whisper. Then we have our Marcados coming in. <laughs> I like that. Uh, it's Picados. Really, really uh, authentic sounding um, because they are authentic pizzicatos. Then we have our tremolos. the trills with our seconds here you hear a little bit of the lower uh, octave coming in as I bring up the modulation then our effects here so we have the shorts And finally, our risers. Uh, and the low and with the risers, the lower octaves are the long risers, and the higher octaves are the short risers. So there you go with that, and that will get us through our cellos. And next we have our bases. So with our bases, we're going to start with our legato sustains right here. And we have our sardino sustains. Do we have our Marcados? Then our Spicados. Pizzicados. Tremolos. Then we have our effects, shorts. You don't really 
definitely have fun with those. And then um, we'll end our basis here with the risers. Cool. Then we have some bonus content. So with the bonus content, we actually have uh, a, a couple of articulations, some light strings. We have uh, FFF violins. We'll start there with our FFF violins. Very dynamic there. Then we have our sustains with our uh, light strings ensemble. Then our Sordino. these in a different order than our whisper whisper sustains again sounds uh it's hard not to come up with an idea with these then we have our tremolo. Then we have our trills. Again, remember the seconds. Then we have our marcados. Again, uh, some great stuff there. Spiccatos. Then we have our pizzicatos. We have our tremolos. Last but not least, we have a couple of harp articulations. And by couple, I mean to. We have the uh, harmonic pluck and the normal pluck. So we'll just do the harmonic pluck at first. Very quiet, very high. So if you want to do something very uh, sort of low light there. And then we have our normal. And again, with this, you have attack per note. You can adjust the release there. Um, so if we do this, and if I turn the release up, so you get more of that air in the back. So really, you can be really dy dynamic. Two more things in the plugin itself that I didn't go over at the beginning. You have some that have A and B. What this allows you to do is to go into the back end and adjust some other additional settings for the sound. So some will just have the letter B, some will have the letter A. So you can click on those and you can go even deeper into the sound design. Um, this one in particular for the harp, you have the slope threshold um, that you can adjust there. 
for the mics and then you also have uh, some dynamic ranges and things you can adjust for the uh, control for the MIDI so you have a lot of things going on there behind the scenes by doing, doing that AB button uh, for those sounds so the last thing that comes included in this already uh, extensive extensive package of, of string sounds is you have the noise floor so I'm going to play the room tone so I'm going to play just the room tone here uh, for the AB mic You might not be able to hear it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost this thing up by a lot. So let's say 20 dB. That might be too loud, but this is what the room tone is. So yeah, that's part part of the built-in sound there. Um, of course, it wouldn't be that loud. And then this is the close mic. So let's uh, play that uh, without. And then let me boost that up about the same. I think it was around 20, 20 something, something. Roughly the same. So that's the close mic. So you can layer that if you want. Uh, but you also get those noise floor wave sounds as part of this package. So yeah, that is an overview of the Pacific Ensemble strings from Performance Samples, the UI, the plugin. Let's jump over to the demo that I have created just for you using only Pacific Ensemble strings. So let's jump over there. All right, so let's go in here. Let's break down what we have track by track. As you can see, it's really not a lot going on in here. It's really five tracks. We're going to talk about the five tracks that I use from the Pacific Strings Ensemble. I use the 16 violins, 12 violas, 10 cellos, 8 basses, starting with the Ensemble patch here. Um, I'm going to just solo this. So I really use that as a guide for the rest of the tracks of how I wanted to break down these other section parts. Um, and once we get towards the end, it starts building up here. One thing to note for all of the libraries in this particular demo, I did switch my dynamics to CC11, but pretty much didn't do much of anything else. I actually did crank the volume over here a little bit, uh, and then I had turned it down up here, so really didn't really matter there, but uh, did some balancing there. So I used this ensemble patch from the light full strings. This is in the bonus content of the folder. I used this ensemble patch to be the guide for the rest of the track, so I took these parts and broke them out into the violin viola cello um and actually uh i copied actually copied this track down for the cello part um and then the other parts i just played in based on the chords that i played um for those interested in the music theory part i just played i believe it's in uh, f minor and i was doing basically six seven eight uh six seven one and f minor typical uh like cinematic chord progression so next we have here the violins legato sustain so i'm going to play that
yeah, so really emotional. Um, you know, almost shed a tear playing that just now. Um, I really like the the legato sound. Uh, again, I didn't choose the sustain mode in this case. I use legato, so I'm playing one note at a time. And the way that the the strings sort of blend into each other, the notes, uh, the single notes there, I really like that. Especially when we get to the end with the high notes here. Yeah, it's it's as if the sh the strings themselves are crying almost. Uh, next we have violas, and let me open that up here. I use the sor Sordino sustain uh, articulation here with the violas, uh, and I'm gonna play what's happening there. I have that coming in a little later in the track, so this is how it comes in. So it's really playing the harmony there with uh, the violins. Let me play that. So you have a little interplay there, some things. I like playing uh, things like this in, uh, part by part because you get some of that interplay. You get some things that actually end up sounding pretty pretty fun pretty nice uh let me go towards the end here so you hear the violas getting up there too along with the violins So not as high as the violins got, but uh, pretty much in the high register of the violas here. And next, I did the cellos. Uh, with the cellos, like I said, I actually copied the ensemble strings patch, uh, duplicated the MIDI patch down here, and I deleted everything above the bass notes. So uh, the cello is actually playing the same as the ensemble patch up here. So you really get some really layered uh, bass notes going with the, with the cellos here. So I'm going to play that. For, and I'm using the cello sustain. Uh, 10 cello sustain patch here. Um, I didn't adjust any volume here. Uh, again, I did that dynamic sting and I'm using legato mode here. And to give you some context, we're going to play just that with the violins and violas. So you start hearing some of the story being told musically with just those three instruments there. And the basses, I added that, uh, not actually further, not way into the track, but I added that and just to add some heftiness to the bottom uh, part of the track. And this is what I'm using um, for the bass. I'm using the legato, uh, legato, legato sustain patch in the bass. And this is how that sounds when that comes in. So a couple things, I'm, I'm, I'm using a lot of the low stuff there, the low register uh, in the bass there, and also I'm making those eight bass players work. I'm putting them to work. They're doing a lot of jumps and moves. Uh, usually they're not doing a lot of long notes, uh, maybe a little bit more into it, but they're doing a lot of moving for bass lines. Uh, so sorry to those eight bass players, but you guys killed it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to play the bass, the cello, the violins, and violas again uh, without the ensemble patch, so you can hear just how those single... Uh, uh, layers come in. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, so that is how I blended all of these different things together. And it's like I said, it's just five tracks. It is um, less than two minutes and it's uh, an F minor. I should change that here. But it really, that's all you need. You don't really need a lot to get a, a, an emotion across um, with, with sounds like these. And they're already emotional enough. Yeah, so some quick final thoughts. Again, Pacific Strings, Pacific Ensemble Strings. It's an incredible library. Again, the price is only $249 if you own some of the other Pacific uh, performance sample libraries $249 is the loyalty intro even if you don't own them you still get an intro price of $399 you really get a great value for money the intro period does end March 30th March 30th which is also a great time March 30th 2023 so you have a couple of months to save up if you want to save up a little bit these sounds I would definitely add to my arsenal um, again you get the 16 violins the 12 violas the 10 cellos the 8 basses the bonus content you get the close and AB mics you get a bunch of articulations you get a harp you get the noise floor wave um, it does require the full version of contact so reminder you do need a full version of contact to really get the full usage out of this some use cases i would suggest um i personally would use this in my trailer music stuff i would use this in cinematic things if i want to layer this even if you're doing r&b pop music these are really high quality sounding strings over 30 gigabytes of strings so you're really getting the value for your money there so i'm definitely going to add it to my trailer template i also have other templates that i use here in logic that i have string sound so i'm going to add this it's going to take me some time because i want to uh, save each of these patches individually uh in logic as patches so that when i load up contact i can just click the patch and it will load up so i'm gonna do some of that savings but those are some use cases and uh so what is missing there's really not a lot missing here you in fact you get more than what you pay for because you get the bonus content you get some of the effects and things so there's not a lot missing what would i change i would actually like if there was some sort of like animation with this guy or i don't know if it's a guy Gerald, or, or non-binary um with this figure moving when i play the strings again that's more of a personal thing it has nothing to do with the actual value you get of the plugin uh maybe if there's an option to change sort of the colors or skins of the background um again this these are all cosmetic things has nothing to do with the sound the sound is incredible the value you get for the price you'll pay is incredible especially if you can get in on the intro price before march 30th 2023 again this is marcus manderson aka the fingers with the sample list be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed watching this video we have more content coming your way soon so stay tuned be safe and be well everyone all right all right peace